In this lecture, we are going to define the tangent space of a differentiable manifold at a point, and we are going to see that it is a vector space. And moreover, we are going to define the tangent space manifold. If M is a CR manifold, this tangent space manifold, which is nothing else than the disjoint union of the tangent spaces to, of the manifold at any of its points, is a CR minus one manifold. We just gave an idea of why the definition of a tangent space of an extra manifold at a point has to be possible. But we want more. We don't want just to define the tangent space at a point. We want to, to see, for instance, this tangent space is a vector space. So we are going to try to get there. Consider a parametrization of an open subset U of an embedded manifold, M. Okay, here, big M is the manifold and a small M is the dimension. And by definition, the differential of uh, the parametrization of the parameter Y is an isomorphism between R to the small m and the tangent space of m at the point phi applied to y. Okay? We can interpret such a map as an identification between the tangent space of R here would be R to the m between the time space uh, uh, of r to the m at y, which is just r to the m, okay, r, r, uh, r to the m is already a linear uh, space, so the best linear approximation is gonna be itself. So we can interpret it as an identification between r to the small m and the tangent space of M at phi of Y, okay? The issue is that this identification works very well, but there are other identifications because we can consider other parametrizations of uh, a neighborhood of the point phi Y. We could do that, like in here. Here we have uh, a parametrization of this point that we can call, for instance, x. And if we have another parametrization, then we get another identification between r to the small m and the tangent space. And uh, we have indeed a commutative diagram, which it is commutative by the chain rule. So we are in this situation with two identifications between R to the indeed M and the tangent space uh, of M at the point X and another identification over here between R to the M and the tangent space of M at X. What happens is that uh, any of these two copies of Rn is a good candidate to be considered as the tangent space of the manifold at X because uh, they are identified with such space. But the issue is that unless we have a very good reason to prefer one of them, we have to consider all of them and then we cannot have here uh, uh, many copies, infinitely many copies of R to the N with no structure. What we have to do is identify them. In, in such a way, we are going to recover uh, the tangent space of M at a point X as a linear vector space of the right dimension. Because yeah, we have infinitely many copies, but essentially, they're all the same. I mean, 
this one is identified with this tangent space and this one is identified with this tangent space. So these two ones have to be identified. And obviously the identification is the map that it is closing the diagram, which is uh, just the differential at Y of the map of a uh, change of parameters. But the analogous of the analog of the a map of chains of parameters for the abstract case is uh, the coordinate change. This is uh, the coordinate change between different local charts. So we can try to use this, uh, uh, to, to, to use this uh, coordinate change in order to identify different copies of the tangent space. That's the idea that we are going to follow. Okay? So, again, the differentials here of phi and psi at the point y and c are maps identifying r to, to the power m or n and the tangent space of f of m at x and in that way, we obtain an actual identification, this one, between copies of R to the N, okay? So we can try to use this in order to define the tangent space of M at X, okay? Consider an atlas of our manifold, okay? Here we have the maps that belong to the atlas. And a tangent vector is just gonna be an equivalence class. The first component here is going to be a point of the manifold. The second component is just going to point out the local chart in which we are working, okay? And so because of that, the point X has to belong to the domain of the local chart. And the third component is just a vector in R to the small n, where small n is the dimension of the manifold. That's it. That's uh, a tangent vector is an equivalence class. But obviously, we never defined what the equivalence relation is. So let's do it. When uh, two, uh, two, two expressions of this way belong to the same equivalence class. First of all, they are representing tangent spaces at the point x and x prime. So the first thing that we need is that x has to be equal to x prime. And then what, uh, what we are actually is if you look at the, this picture over here, what we want is to consider u in here, in the first copy of Rn, and b in the second copy. And they are identified in the embedded case by the differential of the map of change of parameters, whose analog for the abstract case is the differential of the coordinate change. And so because of that, what we do uh, need to do in order to define this properly is identifying this, uh, uh, the classes of these two points if the differential of the uh, uh, coordinate chains at the point phi i of x sends u into v. If that happens, then we say that these two vectors belong to the same equivalence class. In that way, we have, we, we have a, a proper definition of the time space of M at, the, at a point X, and it is obvious that this time space at X is a vector space 
of dimension small n. So it's, it's, it's good. We're actually progressing. We just saw how to define the tangent space of a manifold at a point x. But we want to go even farther. We want to consider the disjoint union of these tangent spaces of M at any of its points. And we want to see that this uh, whole tangent space has a structure of differentiable manifold. So in order to do that, we are going to consider the local charts in a fixed trivialization atlas. Okay. As we said, a tangent vector is an equivalence class of points of the form x, i, u, and here it's the description of the equivalence relation. Let's define the local charts for the tangent space. Here we have u sub i prime, okay, which is going to be the equivalence classes of points of this form x, i, u, where x is a point in the domain of definition of the local char phi sub i, and u is a vector in Rn. And this space over here is just the union for x in u sub i of the tangent spaces of m at the point x. So we want actually to define a local chart. And uh, what we can do is uh, defining the image of the equivalence class of x i u as uh, phi sub i applied to x u. That's going to give us a bijection between u sub i prime and v sub i times r to the n, okay? And that's going to be our local chart. Our main concern here is that uh, there, uh, these local charts have to satisfy a compatibility condition, okay? And let's see that this happens. Something that it is not uh, totally right here is that here uh, it's fair to consider the disjoint union symbol. The tangent space of M is going to be the disjoint union of the tangent spaces of M at any of these points. And we are just giving the address. And we have to check out that the compatibility condition holds. Okay, what we are going to see is that this atlas is not of the same differentiability class of the manifold M. If M is a CR manifold, the tangent space is not a CR manifold anymore. It's a CR minus one manifold. And why is that? It's because of the specific form of the coordinate chains. Our choice of local charts implies that the coordinate chains between the local char phi sub i prime and phi sub j prime is going to be of this form. In the first component, we just have the coordinate chains between these two local charts, phi sub i and phi sub j. And in the second part, we have the differential of the, the coordinate chains at the point phi sub i of x applied to u. That's, that's the way it, it has to work. As, as we said uh, early on when we were talking about parametrizations, tangent vectors defined this way by using local charts uh, have to be have to be identified by these maps that in the embedded case are the differential of the maps of change of parameters and in the abstract case 
is the differential of the coordinate change. But there is downside here is that since we are considering the differential, our coordinate change is not anymore CR, is CR minus one. We have the exact same problem that we saw at the beginning of uh, the lecture when we were considering the differential of a map between open subsets of Euclidean spaces. The differential, if the map is CR, is not anymore CR, it's CR minus one. Here we have this problem. And in particular, it implies that if M is a CR manifold, its tangent space is a CR minus one manifold. It has even a uh, better structure, if you want, it's, uh, it's a vector bundle because uh, these identifications over here are clearly linear, but uh, we, are talking, we are going to talk about that later on. In, in another lecture in the future. What we have so far is the tangent space of M is a differentiable manifold, is a CR minus one differentiable manifold, and we have another interesting thing is that the dimension of this tangent space is twice the dimension of M. You can check it out, it's because uh, vi is contained in r to the n, so this is contained in r to the 2n. Okay. In this lecture, we defined the source and target spaces for the differential of a differentiable map between differentiable manifolds. In the next lecture, we are going to stay in a more detailed way the differential of a map and its properties. Thank you for your attention.